Are you fascinated by the world of cybersecurity, but often feel like being successful in the field is like climbing a massive, impenetrable wall? Like you need some kind of secret code or superhuman strength to even get your foot on that first foothold? Well, it's time to grab your gear and get ready to climb because you've tuned in to Scaling the Wall, the podcast that breaks down the cybersecurity journey into manageable steps. I'm your host, Will Brooks. Each week, I'll be your guide as we talk to the real people who are living and breathing cybersecurity every single day. We'll hear their stories, learn from their experiences, and gather those golden nuggets of wisdom they've picked up along the way. No jargon, no hype, just real talk about what it takes to build a successful career in this exciting field. So whether you're a student just starting out, a career changer looking for a new challenge, or a seasoned pro wanting to stay ahead of the game, Listen in as we scale the wall of cybersecurity together. Bobby, last time we wrapped up the episode, you were telling us about your podcast, and I realized we didn't really get too much into it. It's too much detail on it, but um, I'm curious what kind of led you to start a podcast on, on frameworks. (laughs) <laughs> well, it's more specifically about CMMC, True, yes. and it's really, it's really focused uh, because as I went to, have you ever done a Google search? I promise I'll bring it back to what we're talking about. But have you done like a Google search and like it's crickets, and you're like, that's not good. Yeah. You know, you're like, <laughs> you're like, I'm in for an uphill battle. Uh, that's how I felt when I was trying to tackle CMMC as an MSP. Like it was crickets. You know. I, I've been around since 2002, so there's always a plethora of, of, of consulting firms that you can talk with that, have, that really understand the numbers and the financial aspects about how you can really be a great MSP. Nobody really understands how to do CMMC as an MSP. There's just very few organizations that are trying it and even less that really understand it. And so uh, I was like, well, we've got to change this. So I'm just going to do a podcast and talk about our journey, about how we're doing this and just try to be as transparent as I have uh, through it just to help them understand. So it's, it's really about just trying to give back to the community and try to help others do it. Because if I'm going to get more tools available for me to utilize in the CMMC space, I'm going to need to have more of my fellow brethren of managed service providers um, in that space. Yeah. And right now it's just kind of a ghost town. It makes me think you talk about the ghost town the the crickets google search around any sort of i hope this doesn't get censored any sort of government issued framework um <laughs> and one thing i've noticed just in my short time in this in the channel in the space a lot of these frameworks do not get updated quickly so it doesn't surprise me that a lot of the content around it would be non-existent slash not very user friendly yeah well it's it's kind of a weird bag uh with NIST created the 800-171 standard many years ago, Mm -hmm. and that's what the CMMC program is based off of. So it's been around for quite a while, but the actual maturity of the implementation of the CMMC program has, is still ongoing. And so that's where it just becomes really confusing. And there's various other things I'm sure we could cover about that aspect. (laughs) No, of course. Very frustrating. I I equate doing CMMC and being ready for CMMC is basically riding a train that has yet, the station be fully built and yeah. you're still on the track heading to that station and, and you trust and, and hope that it will be there when you show up. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that said, like, I think of, I think of whatever framework you're approaching. A lot of times these are confusing. There's a lot of layers to them. Um, and I know today specifically we're talking about the CIS framework. And the reason I, I bring this up is when you're trying to take, so you as, you as an MSP, right? You have technical knowledge. You understand what a lot, you may have to, really take the time to understand what each of these controls is asking for. But on a base level, you know what each of these controls does. Um, now, though, you're saying, hey, I'm I'm implementing the CIS framework across all of my clients. I have to now somehow explain to them right. what's in each of these implementation groups. So how do we get there? You know, what? how do you go from I'm a nerd, yeah. I, I'm a nerdy MSP, I'm an, I'm an, I'm a cybersecurity guy. And now I'm conveying not just cybersecurity, but I'm conveying a framework established by an organization around these cybersecurity controls. How do we get there? Uh, I'll share my perspective of how I'm 
currently trying to pull that off. Sure. Um, and, uh, you know, if you talk to me in two years, I'll probably go, I was so stupid. <laughs> this is the way to do it. You know, <laughs> this is the better way to do it. Yeah. Cause so I'll share, you know, version, whatever version uh, that I feel is the appropriate way at this time. But when I first started trying to get into doing it, I was like, I want to impress my clients with my knowledge of CIS. And that was absolutely the wrong way to do it because they don't care uh, about really <laughs> about that. You know, it's like, I don't go to the doctor and the doctor goes, let me tell you about board certifications and about how awesome that, you know, like, look, man, my toes hurting. Can you sort of tell me how to get it fixed? Um, and then, Oh, what things should I be doing to make sure I don't keel over in the next eight months to a year so that I can be around for my family. Uh, and the doctor goes, well, this, 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 and this. Right. Um, but they have a standard that they follow. Right. And so we started realizing, you know, kind of, going over everything with the client is probably not a good idea. Uh, they, they start drooling, <laughs> their eyes glaze over, they don't really care about it. So you've got to be able to take the controls and you've got to think about where they're at and where they need to go. And what we started seeing is pretty much everybody has the same challenge. They, they need to sort of all take the same bite. Well, what does that first bite look like? So then what we saw, we started thinking is, well, let's just focus on some families and make that bite what it is. And that was, in my opinion, a wrong approach because there's so many bites that are different in that one family that may not give you the same return on your effort, right? So what we started then saying is, okay, well, now based on the CIS families, what are specific controls that we know will turn the most invested turn back for them? And let's not talk about the specific control families or those numbers with the clients. Let's just give them, here's the five or six things that you need to do. And I'm telling you, you're not doing it. If you don't do it, you're going to screw up and it's going to screw you over. So don't do these things. We need to get you from this side over to this side. That has been the most productive for us because we, I, I tell you, it's so much easier to get clients to do what we need them to do. It's all based off of CIS, but we're not talking necessarily CIS with them. Does that make sense? Yeah, no. Um, and so we're going through checking those boxes, but it's all coming through the CIS lens of, of what we're focusing on. And then what we have is we have like kind of second steps and third steps that they don't even know about. They're behind the curtain. They're back over here. We know what those are going to be because almost everybody is following the same playbook because they all pretty much have the same problems. And that's that seems to be the best success for us. I mean, that makes a lot of sense, right? The We've talked previously, the CIS framework is probably one of the more accessible ones to MSPs. Yeah. But if you were to dump that on a client, I mean, we recently, a, a couple of months ago, I did a presentation for um, charter schools in New York City, right? And New York State has basically released a cybersecurity standard, you call it that. It's not, it's not anything fancy like CIS or CMMC. It's a standard set by the state that all schools... And they said, here are the security controls your school needs to adhere to. So you have admins at the school who don't have a cybersecurity bone in their body reading this and going cross-eyed, right? So I totally get what you're saying of saying, hey, we can't just dump the CIS framework wording on our client. So a, an MSP needs to be able to both understand what those security controls mean for them, but then learn to regurgitate that information and deliver it in a way that the client's going to understand. At least that's what I'm getting from what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so for us, what we felt like was the smartest way to get at this, to crack this nut is identity management. So we need to be able to find a way to work with our clients to provide them identity management and identity management needs to be sacred. Uh, so that means we need to know what they're doing and how they're doing it and have the ability to enforce what they want to get done. So we need to be able to wrap our arms around it. Well, how do you do that? Well, you can do that with Active Directory and group policies, or you can do it very easily with Intune. And then you're like, okay, well, What's the difference between the two? Well, there's some pretty big differences between the two, but you can accomplish a lot of times the exact same thing with both. It's just so happens you don't need to have a server to do it with Intune. So if you have a less complex environment for the client, that means there's less challenges for them to get compromised on an Active Directory server. Um, if you talk to a security expert and say, would you rather have an Active Directory server or would you rather have your devices managed by Intune? If, if you could do both, uh, I think nine out of 10, you know, assessors would say, I'd, I'd much rather go with Intune because you just have a smaller tax surface than you do with Active Directory. Threat actors have been 
punching it in the face for decades and they know how to do it really, 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 yeah. really well. Um, and so, uh, so that's when you start thinking about, okay, now we can have identity management and those are all part of the CIS frameworks, right? Uh, and now you can start having identity management and you can start leveraging patch management. You can start handling those types of controls. And okay, so now we can start removing admin rights, taking those away, enforcing multi-factor authentication through single sign-on because now that we have identity management, we know who you are. And so now we can go through various different ways of authenticating you, right? And then you, then you, we start thinking about, well, how do we do cybersecurity training? Okay, do we want to do like a, you know, an out of the box type of solution, or do we want to do it ourselves? We we provide the training ourselves for our clients. Like we don't do like no before or some other solution like that. We don't push them towards that. We actually manage that ourselves. And uh, I think on average, we have a lot less click throughs on stuff because of that, because they're very customized, specific training to our clients that we do. And we offer that as part of the package that we do with them. We manage to work that into our agreements with them. And uh, that allows them to get better real feel knowledge of what they're going to have uh, coming at them as a threat. And so on average, uh, I think people are more educated about it and they have a better Do chance. you, um, do you see value in bringing to the attention of the client that you are now adhering to a framework? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. We talk about it, we share it. Uh, and what we do um, a lot of times is, and this is kind of funny, we, we take the CIS, it's, it's really big, right? There's 18 controls and, and it's very easy for the clients to get lost. So each of those phases that we're moving them through, we do an abridged version of a score based on CIS for them. And that's what we do. So we, we've taken all those controls and we boil them down to a smaller Excel spreadsheet that has kind of a dashboard that says, okay, here's, here's where you're at. And, and we're listing those specific kind of control families, but it just gives them some basic overarching scrolls. And then in the other tabs, it's got some more specific definitions. Well, why is that important? So if someone comes along that, like you, who's going to be talking to them about their cyber insurance, they say, well, we just went through this with, with, with Axiom and this is what they, they gave me. And you look at that and you go, holy cow. Yeah, this is great. This gives me yeah. <laughs> a lot of good information about where you're at. So it, it provides them a useful tool that for somebody else that's more educated in that space, they can immediately take that and start having something that's of value to them to start basing off of, right? And then, of course, they'll want to talk to us and then we can provide some more insight because a lot of times we have more detailed, when we're going through that review with them, um, we, we put in more detail. No, that's like fantastic. That. Um, but they, we don't share that necessarily with them. It just helps us roadmap so that we know the next Yeah, so, so now if you were to make the transition, so this is, Hey, we're following CIS framework. These are this we're kind of where we want to have you. Here's your score. I, I love all that concept. Let's say you're an MSP who has had a client for five years or whatever, in some length of time where they they love what you're doing. All of a sudden, now you say, "Hey, I want to start implementing a framework because it's easier for me to follow, easier for me to adhere to." And this kind of might line up with some of your experience. Um, Let's you, you you brought up local admin rights before. So let's, I mean, that's always mm -hmm. one that I feel like is a bit of a challenge for a lot of MSPs to implement oh, because yeah. it's, it can be very annoying to the, to the end user. Um, so now you're saying, Hey, you're, you're yeah. a client of, you're, you're a client of mine. Hey, all of my clients are now moving into the CIS framework because that's, that's the way we're going. So I need to, I need to remove admin rights from your machine. Like, how do you, how do you navigate that conversation? Because like, oh, you never did this to me, Bobby. We never had to do that before. Why am I doing that now? How do you navigate this new framework? Yeah, you, you have to, you have to care enough not to care. <laughs> I like that. That's good. <laughs> I don't know if that no, makes perfect, sense, yeah. but like you, you've got to care enough that you don't care if they're yeah. going to get mad at you, right? Um, so that it, the best friends are the friends that are going to be like, Hey, you're being stupid, dude. You know, not the person that's going to be like, Oh, you're, you're so awesome. Yeah. Go ahead and drive off the cliff and I'll be over here waving and say, Oh, you know, you, you want to have somebody that's going to be like, Hey, hit the brakes, dude, put it in reverse. Let's, let's turn around. You're going the wrong way. We're, we're about to go off a cliff here and there's going to be consequences. And I don't want to come along with you. Um, this year, is the first year that we've lost more clients than mm. we've brought on. And mainly the reason why is, is we've had tough discussions with clients and told them you need to do this. You need to do this. This is going to mess it up. And you're not doing what we recommend. Like we've, we've just kind of taken a hard line attitude towards the bite size, right? 
before what we would do is we'd give them this big grocery list. It was really easy for them to get lost in the mix and we would kind of feel sad for them and we'd be like, eh, yeah, you know, I get it. And, but now it's like, here's a small size, bite size. You're not going to do that. I, I don't know if I want to be along with you when you're yeah. off this cliff. Like if you don't, if you don't want to remove admin rights, like it's going to be a bad day when you get pwned uh, versus them having a fully functioning beachhead to continue to attack your organization from versus, you know, them fighting through the different security mechanisms for them to get a, a, a somewhat decent foothold inside your environment of, of escalating. They're, they're going to fire off a lot more alerts and alarms, and it's going to be a lot harder for them to stay in there. I mean, could they have a zero day and get immediate root X? Sure. You know, those, those things happen, but it's a lot harder for them. It's, it's just a much more difficult journey and battle for them. And, you know, the statistics have proven it over and over and over again that that's the case. So, like, why would I want to be along for the journey with a client that yeah. wants to do that, right? They're just, they're, at this point, it's it's almost like do no harm, and I'm going to be a part of them doing harm to them. So you really have to care enough not to care. But you want to boil it down to small, bite-sized things that you're like, here's these five or six things that you have to do. Like, well, I don't really want to do this. I, I really get it. And I want to work with you. I'm hearing what you're saying, but let me tell you the horror stories of why these things need to happen. Okay. We really, really need to do that. Well, you know, I've got some use cases. Okay. You listen to what they're saying, but you talk to them the next meeting, right? The next thing you talk to them again about it. And if they're just going to, if it's going to be that way, you, you got to figure out like, do you want to be wrong for the, for the bad ride? And if the answer is no, then you're going to have to fire them uh, and, and, yeah. and let them go. Uh, and, uh, We've done a lot more letting go clients than we've ever done in the last year because we've had those small bite-sized conversations. It was just surprising how some people, it's very polarizing. Some people are like, yes, this is what I've been looking for. And they're just, let's go, you know? And you're like, okay, they want to have the next meeting. And then you have other clients who are like, I don't really want to do any of this. Uh, you know, I just want to pay you and then choke you if something goes wrong. You're like, I, I don't really want to be part of that. Scaling the Wall is brought to you by Fifth Wall Solutions, a cyber insurance company that partners directly with MSPs to make cyber insurance more accessible to their clients than ever. Check us out at fifthwallsolutions.com slash MSP. If you like what you heard today, leave us a rating on Apple Podcasts or in the Spotify app, and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Thanks for listening, and we'll catch you next time.